This video may be helpful if you get stuck on 2D shapes for this week's homework. It covers polygons, but it also covers quadrilaterals. For the polygons, you need to look at the help sheet that's in your help sheet book and make sure that you remember the name of each one that goes with a certain number of sides. So hexagons, pentagons, heptagons. Let's move on. OK, for triangles, you need to use video J2. That will go into the different types of triangles and also the rules for working out missing angles. Quadrilaterals, hang on, we're going to come on to that in a moment. One thing to be very careful of, we're, we're very used to seeing these regular shapes, but when it comes to irregular shapes, you must be able to identify what each of these shapes um, are by counting the sides. Um, make sure they're just straight sides, no curved lines allowed at all. So these ones on the right hand side here, you should be able to identify what they are by counting the sides. Don't think that an octagon needs to look like a regular octagon, or the same with all of the other shapes on here. Moving on, for all polygons you need to be able to recognise them and also identify the properties of them. With quadrilaterals this can be quite tricky because there are so many different types. Let's go through each of these quadrilaterals and see if we can work out what makes them special from other quadrilaterals. So we'll start with a square. Okay, first of all, it's got four sides. It's quadrilateral, it's going to have four sides. All four sides are identical length, so we've got um, four equal sides. We've also got four right angles in the corners, so they look like the corner of pages in a book. Each of those is 90 degrees. Parallel line-wise, we've got one line here parallel to this one here, making a pair. And we've got a different pair of parallel lines over here, so two pairs of parallel lines. You often get asked about lines of symmetry on this shape. You have a vertical line of symmetry, one going horizontally, and you also have two diagonal making four all together. Moving on to a rectangle, very similar, except for the fact that you have got two short lines, which are parallel to each other and of equal length, two long lines, which are parallel to each other and of equal length. With regards to the angles, again, you've got your four right angles, one in each corner. Lines of symmetry can sometimes be confusing on a rectangle. People often think there are four, whereas there are actually only two. So we've got one vertical one in the middle and one horizontal one here. Don't be tempted to put diagonal ones. It may end up looking like a Union Jack flag, but they are not actually lines of symmetry. Moving on to a rhombus. Last year, one of the children in the 11 plus classes said that a rhombus is a square that's been hit by a bus. I like that one. We've still got one pair of parallel lines there, which are the same length, but we've got another pair of parallel lines here, and those are the same length as the first length. So basically it is like a squash square. It's a, it's a, um, a quadrilateral that's got four equal sides. Our right angles are gone. Instead, we're replacing those with an acute angle and an equal acute angle. We've also got an, an obtuse angle, and opposite that we've got another obtuse angle. With regards to lines of symmetry, we've got one running diagonally here, and one running diagonally here. Those are the only two. Moving on, a parallelogram. Now this would be a rectangle that's been hit by a bus. Here we've got two short lines, which are equal and parallel to each other. We've got two long lines which are equal and parallel to each other. Our angles, again, we've got an acute and another acute which are equal, and we've got an obtuse and another obtuse which are equal. Uh, this shape has no lines of symmetry at all. It's very easy to try and draw a diagonal one on, but you would be wrong to do that. There are no lines of symmetry. You cannot fold a parallelogram perfectly in half. Moving on again, if you ever get confused between which of these bottom shapes is a rhombus or a parallelogram, there's one little trick that you can use, and that is to think about the length of the words of square, rhombus, rectangle and parallelogram. Of a square and a rectangle, a square is the shortest word, and it matches up with a rhombus, which is the shortest word out of rhombus and parallelogram. Rectangles are long, longer than a square, a rectangle is a longer word. Parallelograms are long. They're longer than a rhombus. 
So a rectangle goes with a parallelogram. Longest word, longest shape. Just one trick you might want to consider if you get confused between the two. Moving on to a kite. Okay, a kite has got two short lines. They are not parallel to each other, but they are equal. It's got two long lines, which are not parallel to each other, but they're equal. We have one line of symmetry running right down the middle, which means that whatever this angle is here will be the same as this angle there. Be warned, sometimes they present a kite in a slightly different way where the line of symmetry is not vertical. For example, this kite here has been laid on its side. It is still a kite. It's not a diamond. There's no such thing as a mathematical shape called a diamond. Moving on, sometimes the sticky outy bit becomes a sticky inny bit on a kite and we call this an inverted kite or a delta or an arrowhead. Here we've got a trapezium, that's how we tend to name it, but it's also called a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral that has only one pair of parallel lines. Here we've got one pair, here we've got one pair, and here we've got one pair. Notice that the lines do not need to be the same length, they just need to be parallel to each other. Be warned, sometimes they twist around a trapezium and they stand it on its end. It's still a trapezium, even though the, those parallel lines are now pointing upwards. This trapezium has one line of symmetry down the middle. The others do not. It doesn't have to have a line of symmetry. Sometimes you have a very steep end and sometimes you have a very shallow end. It's still a trapezium. This one here actually has right angles on. It's still a trapezium. Moving on, get used to thinking about the internal angles of regular shapes. I'm aware that we spent a lot of time talking about the internal angles of triangles and also of quadrilaterals. Remember that the internal angles of a quadrilateral add up to, 100, add up to 360 and the internal angles of triangle add up to 180. You're unlikely to be asked about adding up the internal angles of other polygons with more size. But one thing that does come up quite often is asking you to compare the sizes of the internal angles. What you need to remember is if you're dealing with regular shapes, the more sides a shape has, the larger the internal angle will be. So for example, going from a triangle to a pentagon maybe, to a nonagon, to a decagon, the more sides the shape has, the larger those angles will be. And finally, just a brief word about circles. You don't get many questions on circles, but it's important to know the terminology that goes with them. You need to know that the middle is called the centre. You also need to know that the line around the outside is called the circumference. You may also get some questions that refer to the radius. The radius is basically this distance here from the centre to the outside using a straight line. And the diameter is twice the radius. It's a line that goes right through the middle or through the centre, should I say, from one side to the other. You may get questions on these occasionally, so it's worth knowing the terminology. So make sure that you know everything that's on this video, refer to it to help you with your homework, and just keep all of that information locked into your brain.